Hi everyone! In the last video, I show you how to initialize Fabrics Canvas in React application, and how to add a simple UI elements like buttons that add a basic objects such as circles and rectangles to the canvas. Today, we are going to take things a step farther. I will show you how to build a settings panel that lets you and your users modify and manipulate canvas objects. Changing things like the background color of a rectangle, its size, or even adding effects like shadows and borders. We will go through each part of the code in detail, so you will have a clear understanding of how it all works. Let's get started. To keep our project organized and easy to manage, let's create a new file called settings.js. This component will handle all the controls for the canvas objects. By separating this logic into its own component, we maintain a clean and scalable code base. Inside settings.js, we start by importing the necessary hooks from React. Next, we define our settings component and pass the canvas as a prop. This allows our settings panel to interact with the Fabric.js canvas initialized in the main application. The reason we pass the canvas as a prop is so that our settings component can listen to events happening on the canvas and update the UI accordingly. This way, when a user selects an object on the canvas, the settings panel knows what object is selected and can display the specific controls. Now let's define the state variables that will store the properties of the selected canvas object. These states will help us to manage and update the properties like width, height, diameter and color of the objects. We use useState to create state variables for selected objects and its properties. For example, selected object state, this state holds the currently selected object on the canvas. It's essential because it lets our component know which object's properties to display and edit. With high diameter and color, these states store the corresponding attributes of the selected object. They will be linked to the input fields in the settings panel so that users can edit these properties directly. For instance, if the user selects a rectangle, width and height will be populated in the rectangle's current dimensions. If the user selects a circle, diameter will be populated instead. Now, let's set up event listeners on the Fabrics canvas using the useEffect hook. These listeners will allow us to detect when an object is selected, modified or scaled and update the state accordingly. The useEffect hook is perfect for this because it runs after the component mounts and allows us to add and clean up event listeners. For example, selection created is triggered when the user selects a new object on the canvas. We call handle object selection to update the state with this object's properties. Selection updated, triggered when the user modifies the selection, like adding another object to the selection. Again, handle object selection updates the state. Selection cleared is triggered when the user deselects all objects on the canvas. We reset the state using the clear settings function. Object modified, triggered when an object's properties are modified, for example, resized or rotated the state is updated with the new properties. And the last one, object scaling, is triggered when the user is in the process of scaling an object. This ensures that the settings panel reflects any changes made in real time. Next, we need to define the handle object selection function. This function will capture the selected object's attributes and update our state so that UI reflects the object's properties. Here's how we handle the selection of an object. If the selected object is a rectangle, we calculate its width and height based on its scale and set these in the state. We also store its fill color. If the selected object is a circle, we calculate its diameter, which is 2 times radius times scale, and store its fill color. For instance, a rectangle doesn't have a diameter, so we clear the diameter state when a rectangle is selected. This ensures that only relevant controls are displayed. And finally, the clear settings function is simple but crucial. This function resets all properties to their default values when no object is selected, ensuring that the settings panel is empty and clean. Now that we have the logic in place, it's time to build the UI for our settings panel. This UI will consist of input fields that allow users to adjust the properties of selected object. We will create a div container with the class settings and dark mode. Inside, we'll conditionally render input fields based on the type of selected object. This ensures that users only see relevant controls. To show inputs, 
We check if an object is selected and what type it is before rendering the corresponding input fields. This helps in creating a user-friendly interface where only the relevant controls are shown. We use an input component for each attribute, width, height, diameter and color. The Fluid probe ensures that input takes up the full width of the container for better UX. Each input is labeled, for example, with a width, height, diameter and color label, and linked to a specific handler function that updates the state and the canvas in real time. To make our settings panel easy to use and visually appealing, we'll add some CSS styling. Here's the CSS that positions the settings panel on the right side of the screen, centered vertically. I use the position fix that ensures that panel stays in the same place as the user scrolls. It's placed on the right side and vertically centered using the transform translate Y. We use display flex, flex direction column, to stack the input fields vertically with some space in between by setting gap to 8 pixels. The panel has a neutral background color for better visibility and padding for better UX. The empty pseudo class removes padding when no controls are displayed, effectively hiding the panel when there is no selected object, and there is no JavaScript needed for that. Finally, we need to ensure that when a user changes a value in the input fields, the corresponding attribute of the selected object is updated in real time on the canvas. Here's how the handle with change function works. We start with value parsing. We clean up the input value by removing any commas and converting it to an integer. Then we update the wave state with a new value. If a rectangle is selected, we update its wave on the canvas by adjusting for the scale factor, wave divided by scale x. And then we call canvas render all to redraw the canvas with updated dimensions. Similarly, here are the handlers for height, diameter and color. For circles, we update the radius using the diameter divided by 2, adjusted by the scale factor. For the background color of an object, we use the fill. This updates the fill color of the selected object and re-renders the canvas to reflect the changes. These handlers ensure that any adjustments made in the settings panel are immediately reflected on the canvas, providing a seamless user experience. And that's it! You've just built a fully functional settings panel that allows users to interactively control the properties of objects on Fabric.js Canvas. This feature adds a lot of flexibility and customization to your Canvas-based application, making it more powerful and user-friendly. In the next video, I will show you how to add other objects like images and videos to your Canvas. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. And let me know in the comments section below if there are any other topics you would like me to cover. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.